Howdy, how y'all feeling today? Get excited. As you guys know, we are on a series this week and we're talking about mentally strong people. So I definitely, absolutely want you to join me today. Get excited. Please stand up. Okay, there we go. All right, all right, all right. All right, guys, so get excited. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, Queen, welcome to Healing 101. My name is Dr. Manifa Jones. I'm excited to have you guys with me. Hey, Mom, we are talking about mentally strong people. So if that's something that interests you, I would definitely invite you to hang out. I want you guys to know that I have 25 plus years of experience as a master's level psychologist. I'm a transformational life coach. In addition to that, I am a mom, a sister, a daughter, a wife, and today I'm your friend. So welcome, welcome, welcome to the Love Tribe, previous psychology professor. But the most important thing you need to know is that Healing 101 is a community where we can all come together and just heal. There are a lot of things we've been through in our life. There are a lot of things we've had to overcome. And this, I want you to know, this is a safe space. This is a no judgment zone. I want you to feel free to come here with all your flaws, with all your shortcomings, with all what you label as failures and negativities in your life. And I want you to feel free to come here and lay it all at the table of Healing 101. So one by one, we can dispel the myths in your life and show you your power so you can take your power back. Doesn't that sound exciting? To come to a place free of charge and take your power back from any place in your life that has it. Anyway, that's exciting. So guys, we're on a series now that's called Mentally Strong. We're talking about things mentally strong people just don't do, right? I know for myself that a lot of times we have to understand what is mental strength, right? Our mental strength comes from three things, which is our thoughts, our behaviors, and our emotions. So if you kind of want to judge yourself and measure your mental strength, you have to first look at your thoughts. Are your thoughts of strength or are your thoughts leaning towards weakness? When you think about your thoughts and you want to analyze them, hey, Cheryl, and you think about your thoughts, hey, Tiamve, I hope I'm saying it right. I'm so happy to always see you. When you think about your thoughts, are, do they come from a place of strength or do they come from a place of fear? Do they come from a place of love, which is a high level frequency, or does it come from a place of doubt? I want you to look at your thoughts and say, man, I'm always thinking about doom and gloom. I'm always thinking about the future unknown troubles that may never come. I'm always thinking about how I'm less than. I'm always thinking about the opinions of others, what they think of me. I'm always thinking about if I'm going to have enough money at the end of the month. I'm always thinking about, am I going to be able to pay my bills? I'm always thinking about, will I, will I, will I, will I? Analyze your thoughts. This is an opportunity to see, like, where do you rate yourself on mental strength from one through 10. Look, look at your thoughts. Just look at your thoughts and it'll tell you. Now, the second thing to judge yourself for mental strength as we go into this series of how to be mentally strong is your behaviors. Listen, I love psychology. I love therapy. I love counseling and I love mental health. But I'll be the first person to give you a disclaimer and to tell you, you don't need any professional to analyze you, to diagnose you, for you to know whether your behaviors are going in the right direction or not. You better get excited about that. I just gave you a nugget right there. You don't need anybody outside of yourself to tell you if your behaviors are strength-based or weak-based. You don't need anybody to tell you. I know for myself, let's talk about me, okay? Let's be transparent, right? I know for myself in times past, when I used to have struggles and worries and I get upset, my first thing, um, I was that woman, I need some food, baby. I need to eat. I need to overeat. I need to stuff myself. So my mind went to, what am I going to eat? How am I going to get it? How much am I going to eat? And I'm going to stuff myself to the point where I just pass out and go to sleep and wake up and do it all over again. That was my thing. 
just constantly fed, fed, fed myself until I was so overweight that I couldn't physically be active and do the things that I needed to do just as a woman, right? So that was the way that I soothed myself. So all of us have self-soothing behaviors and everybody can analyze their own. I think I told you before, I had an alcoholic that was in there with me, a man, he had a whole family. He was one of my clients and the daughters were telling me all about him. And I explained to them, I said, listen, he is the one who struggles with alcoholism. He knows he's an alcoholic. He knows he doesn't want to go to the bar. He knows that one drink is too many. He already knows that. Once he drinks one, it's, it's an open floodgate. He's aware of that. That's not the challenge, right? So you know when you're an alcoholic and you drink too much. You know when you're a drug addict. You know when you're a food addict. You know when you're a gambling addict. You know when you're a sex addict. I could go on and on and on and on. Nobody needs to tell you that. All you need to do is look at your behaviors. You may be a people-pleasing addict. You may be a person that don't know how to say no. You got to say yes to everything. Can you watch my kids? Yes. Can you buy me food? Yes. Can you pick me up? Yes. Can you give me money? Sure. I don't need my money to pay my bills. I know you're never going to pay me back. And I know I'm going to be stressed and overwhelmed because the money that I gave you, I need it for my, my electricity cutoff notice. And I know you're going to stiff me again and you're not going to pay me back. But I know I'm going to have stress because I have to replace that money again. You know you're a people-pleasing addict. Because you know at the end of the day, you're concerned about what people are going to say about you. So what do you do? You put yourself in harm's way because you are concerned about what others are going to say about you. So all of us have an addiction. All of us have a way that we self-soothe. And if we even take the time, I'm always available for one-on-one -on -one sessions. But if we ever take the time, we will uncover the fact that something happened to us before. That's why I said we need healing. Something happened to us before that we stuffed down like a volcano and we basically think it's just going to disappear somehow without us going through the work, without us dealing with it, without us actually discussing it. I had traumatic things happen to me when I was younger. I'm just going to ignore it and act like it never existed. And every time my man say something crazy to me, I'm going to pop off. And every time the stranger in Walmart act crazy, I'm going to knock him out. And every time the cashier at the supermarket don't put my money. Well, what you mean you put my money down on a belt? Put it in my hand. You, you don't respect me. You don't know the cashier. You ain't mad at the cashier. You mad at your mama. <laughs> you ain't mad at the cashier. You mad at your ex-husband. You mad at your child. You are not mad at the cashier. You don't know them. So as we uncover how to become mentally strong, we need to diagnose, pick apart, and look at our thoughts. And like, what is the overwhelming thoughts that I have every day? Are they doom and gloom or positive? I love that Queen says she feel herself slowly coming to the point where she's checking herself. And she's becoming more positive. And I love that. Hey, Gwen. In addition to that, look at your behaviors. I know for myself, when I was younger and a people pleaser, I was a yes girl. Yes, I'll do it. Yes, I'll do it. I was a robot. Yes, I'll do it. Y'all saw the step four wives? I was one of them. Yes, I'll do it. Yes, I'll do it. Yes. And y'all saw it coming to America. Whatever you like, that's what I like. Whatever you like, that's what I No. I have my own mind. I have my own thoughts. I have my own beliefs. I have no, 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 no. That would be all the way. No, that part. So now, because I understand that I always wanted to please others and it didn't have nothing to do with my husband. It had nothing to do with my family. It had nothing to do with the business partners. It had everything to do with me feeling like I was less than, and I had to make myself available and appropriate to be accepted and validated. <laughs> now that I think about it, it is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. Is that I tried to squeeze myself into somebody else's mentality. I'm even greater. Like, stop playing. Like, stop playing. You, you bamboozled me years ago. We won't do that today. I promise you that. 
I promise you, I will never try to please you to hurt myself. I used to just help, help, help. And then at the end of the day, I don't have the money for my bills. My car messed up. I don't have no help. I reach out to the same people that reach out to me and they're like, nah, you good. I ain't got nothing for you. You figure it out. I was like, wow, is that how that works? This kind of sucks. So look at your behaviors. Go ahead and document. You know, we journal every day, guys, right? We're always journaling. Please watch the replays if you're new with us. But we journal every night 10 things we are thankful for. We just end our day in gratitude because we know that brings us so much peace, joy, and happiness. And it just puts us in a good vibe, right? And it puts us in the reception space of receiving good and great things in our life. Now, look at your behaviors. Are you a person that your set point is you resort, you resort to anger? You're always ready to pop somebody. You're always ready to curse somebody out. And they're like, she do that to me one more time. No, no, no. It's not her, sis. It's you. Nobody can make you become offended. It's a choice. Nobody can make you get angry. It's a choice. No one can make you become mad. It's a choice. Because what used to upset me before... What used to make me angry before, I got a mantra in my head right now. And guess what my mantra is? Mantra is, he who angers you, controls you. So you can't upset me, baby. <laughs> you cannot. Because you can't control me. I control me. I used to do that when I was 15, 16, 20s, 30s, 40s. We ain't doing that in the 50s, baby. I'm telling you right now, we're not doing it. You can't control me. He who angers me, controls me. So with that being said, I ain't angry anymore. I actually find it funny when people try to be basing towards me and try to be aggressive. I actually look at them like, wow, you're really insecure. And wow, back in the day, that used to scare me and that used to offend me and that used to provoke me. But now you're like funny. Like you should go look in the mirror. You look like a clown right now. Like this is hilarious. Is this the show? That used to get me to give you my money? Is this the show that you acted and performed that used to get me to feel less about myself? I fell for that. Wow. Wow. I fell for that. Well, it's 2022. And as Queen always says, we don't do that no more. It's 2022. I'm not moved by you. So what I am moved by is self-analysis. What I am moved by is self-inventory. What I am moved by is self-care, is self-love, is being on a healing journey because I am a gift. I didn't come to this world to suffer. I didn't come to this world to struggle. I didn't come to this world to always be upset, wondering why I'm not loved and appreciated and valued and respected. That's not the point. That's what I got caught up on. Because of my personality, because of my ego, that's what I got caught up on. But that's not why I'm here. Guess what all that was? I finally figured it out. It was a distraction to knock me off my course. They said, if I get Dr. Manifa Kishma, Unwai Bay Middleton Jones, to believe that she is not the queen that she is, if I get her to believe she is not one of the great ones, if I get her to believe she's not a phenomenal woman, I will keep my knee on her neck till she dies. And she will never walk into her purpose and her destiny. So I'm going to keep people around her that don't speak life into her. I'm going to keep people around her that don't support her, that don't assist her, that don't acknowledge her. I'm, I'm going to keep them people around. And when it's time to celebrate and she says, hey, I have this and I have that. And they're like, okay, who cares? Like, whatever. But then they still call you the next day. Can you cash that me 300 bucks? The same people that don't celebrate you is the same people that's always going to want and need you. It is hilarious. I'm telling you guys, if you start looking at the things that used to provoke you, it's going to be like a comic book. It's going to be like a cartoon. And you're going to laugh at yourself for being so silly for so many years for letting people move you. So what we doing in this season is we getting our power back. Y'all better get excited. 
We're getting our power back, baby. Don't forget, I need you guys to do messages. That's right, Gwen. I need you guys to comment. I need you guys to like. I need you guys to share. And look on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. I'm getting excited. I have a whole no, new YouTube family called the Love Tribe. So you guys, I'm going to be giving out a prize tomorrow. So I'm super excited about that. So the third one is emotions. So if you want to figure out how to be mentally strong, you're going, to, you're going to analyze your thoughts. We've talked about this before. This should all already be in your journal. We're taking notes. We're going to look at our behaviors. And the final thing is we're going to look at our emotions. Can I tell you how I cured myself? You know, I told myself, Monifa, you need to heal. You don't, you don't qualify to talk to nobody, girl. You need to heal. Healer, first heal thyself. And you cannot pour from an empty cup. And when I realized that, I said, okay, let me start looking at my emotions. Okay, let me just pick them one by one. Let me, let me start looking at what's going on over here. And I realized that when people offended me and they made me feel sad or depressed, that's how I labeled it. Of course, it's not true. It's whatever you say it is. You can call it a lesson. You can call it awareness. You can call it acknowledgement that you no longer belong in my life. You can be call, call it, I am now sure that you are not in my corner. Or you could label it as, I'm so sad and depressed because you're not treating me in loving ways. That's what I used to do. And then I used to beat myself up. So with my emotions, what I would do is when I was very, very old, I wasn't sensitive, guys. Listen, I was oversensitive. If you looked at me the wrong way, I was like, oh, they don't like me. Blah, 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 blah. Like I was oversensitive. It's ridiculous, right? Cry baby. So with that being said, when I started to analyze myself and look at my emotions, I said, when I start beating myself up, it is always after an episode with somebody else who never loved me or edified me in the first place. So that person was saying, um, even though you did this for me for 30 something years, you're nothing to me. You're not important to me. I will drive past you to go to the people who never supported me. You know, you, you just look at all that. And, and, and if you realize it, you be like, wait a minute, let me, let me think about what just happened here. I'm beating myself up. Because I feel that I'm less than because you are treating me poorly without understanding that you treat others. This is so exciting. This is free. I hope y'all write this down. You treat others the way you feel about yourself. So I gave you love. I gave you kindness. I gave you generosity. And you shit on me. <laughs> so you stinky over there. That ain't me. I know how I showed up. I know how I came to the table. So if you took all of that information and you decided that you're going to disrespect me, devalue me after all the wonderful, positive, beautiful interactions we've had, and say we've had negative one or two and you still out the door, you wasn't for me anyway. Anybody that you have to be perfect in the presence of, that you can never falter, you can't never make a mistake. You can't never be yourself. You don't want to be around those people. Gwenny said, this is phenomenal and this is exactly what I needed to hear. Thank you, sis. This is just my life. I'm just sharing it with you. Get excited. I tell everybody, everything I learned as a therapist, I learned in real life, not in a college classroom. But when I started to analyze my emotions, I said, okay, every time... This relative does this to me, it spins me and it triggers me. And I'm like, rah, 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 rah. I need cake, I need pizza, I need fried chicken, I need macaroni and cheese. Rah, 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 rah. Go to, uh, I need more, I need more, I need more. Why? Because I'm trying to fill a void that cannot be filled with food. I'm trying to fill a void. Me fe overfeeding myself is me saying to myself, hey girl, you deserve something good. Get some cake and ice cream. You're okay. So I'm trying to scream to myself. Like what I'm trying to do, Queen's like this, the people at my job. What I'm trying to do, Queen, is I'm trying to on a down low communicate with myself and tell myself, girl, even though they treated you so bad, you okay. You can have potato chips. You're okay. You can eat a whole pizza. 
you're okay. So I'm telling myself, I'm feeding myself the reward. So it's not a reward anymore. I don't do that. I remember one time I went to the airport and realized how free I was. I used to go to Queen Anne's. I used to, I went to everything. I'm like, oh, I'm at the airport. I'm gonna get some Cinnabons. I'm gonna get some pizza um sticks and hot dog sticks and cinnamon sticks from Queen Anne. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go oh, to Chipotle and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go over here to McDonald's and Wendy's. I was like, I'm at, I'm just filling up. Like, so me filling up on processed food, what did that do for the person that hurt me? It just gave them something else to talk about. Look at her. Oh my God, she's huge. She's even bigger than she was the last time. It just gave them something else to talk about. And it also made me feel less than. So after I interacted with people, that's why you got to be careful who you put yourself in the space of. Because after I interacted with people who didn't have my highest good, who didn't mind, you know, stepping on me, who didn't mind uplifting me, they, they, they was like, nah, we're we going we gonna to talk trash to you. And guess what I realized? The reason why, Gwen, they were able to throw dirt on me is because they first had the dirt. Like, listen, guys, pay attention. In order for somebody to throw dirt on you, they had to go get the dirt. And they had to hold the dirt. They had to pick up the dirt. They had to bring the dirt all the way over to you and throw it on you. So why would you receive that? People treat you the way they feel about themselves. So all that dirt that they throw it on you, then I used to go home. That's right, Cornelia. Exactly. That's my sister. I used to go home and be like, oh, they said this. They said that. I'm a this person. I'm a that person. Let me go and soothe myself with my addiction. And then the next day, I'm like, dang, I'm gaining more weight. I ain't doing this. I'm not proud of myself when I look in the mirror, then it becomes a spiral. And I said, well, I messed up yesterday. I'm going to mess up again today. I may as well go do it again. Let me soothe myself again. So now I'm not mad at the person that hurt me. Now I'm mad at myself for hurting myself. And my solution for hurting myself is hurting myself further. Now, does that make any sense? That's why we got to be mentally strong. That's why we have to attack our thoughts, our behaviors, and our emotions. That's why we got to take a hold of our emotions, sis. That's why we got to take a hold and say, wait one minute. You threw dirt on me, but what does that have to do with me? I'm clean over here. I'm clean. I even got on white today. Don't, not, not today. I'm just talking um, literally, fi figuratively. I even got, don't be throwing no dirt over here. I'm pure over here. I'm God's woman. I'm love. I'm kindness. I'm generosity over here. And when you start analyzing people and realizing that people treat you the way that they feel about themselves. I'm glad you needed this, Cornelia. That's my sister. Love her dearly. And I love her because she's a person that's always giving, giving, giving. She give. I mean, that, that, that when I, if I've never seen the more selfless woman in this world than that woman right there. I love her. So look at your behaviors and say, do I really want to keep doing this? Do I really want to keep running to the market? Do I really want to keep ordering um, DoorDash and Uber Eats? Do I really want to go to Domino's and Papa John's? This is me. I'm talking about my, my addiction, y'all. Do I really, really want it? And then at the end of the day, I'm like, did I just spend $100 in two days on food being delivered to my house that was processed trash? I need that $100 to pay my cell phone bill. Did I really just do that? Do, do you see the spiral? Thank you, Cornelia. I love you. Mwah. Do you see the spiral that you, somebody affects you, then you go and you affect yourself in a negative way. It's a spiral. So if you look at your emotions and you analyze it, you'll catch yourself. So what I used to do is when I went to the market and say I was getting my little veggie snacks and my mom's like, girl, get yourself some, um, I, let me tell you, I haven't had it in so long. It's crazy. I can't even remember what it is. It's, um. It's um, them bagels, um, cinnamon raisin bagels with cream cheese. So when I used to go, because I journaled, pay attention guys, because I journaled that when I get cinnamon raisin bagels with cream cheese, I go and I toast it up and I tell myself, ooh, this is a treat. I don't tell myself it's a treat anymore. I said, ooh, this is a treat. 
And then I swipe that Philadelphia cream cheese on it while it's cold. I hope I'm not triggering y'all. Sorry, I don't eat it anymore. And then it, it just melts, right? And then I eat that and I can eat two of them. It's ridiculous because one, one you cut in half, you put it in the toaster. I can eat two of them full of cream cheese. Because I journal, sis, that when I go get cinnamon raisin bagels with cream cheese, I'm spiraling. Because when I'm in a good place, I don't want it. When I'm in a good place, I want to exercise. When I'm in a good place, I want my water. When I'm in a good place, I'm eating clean. And when I'm in a bad place, I'm like, go to Giant and get your cinnamon raisin bagels with cream cheese and just eat, 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 eat your troubles away. And I was like, whoa, when I did my self inventory, I was like, nah. So I'm in the market, get my little veggies, be like, get that cinnamon bag. I was like, okay, guess what I do, y'all? Self talk. That's right. I talk to myself. I approve of talking to myself. I have to. I'm an expert. Who am I going to consort with? Get excited. Anyway, I talk to myself and I say, Monifa, what's going on with you? Before, I used to get the raisin bagel, cinnamon raisin bagel, go home toasted, put some cream cheese. Now I say, what's going on with you, sis? What's, what's going on, Monifa? What's going on? And I'm like, I felt sad today because my son did da, 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 da. And I talked to myself and it's like, okay, you are a good mother. I'm sorry he's not responding to you. So this is what I'm going to do. My higher self, Monifa, is going to talk to me, Monifa Queen, right? So I say to myself, Monifa, you are a good mother. You weren't the greatest mother on the planet. You tried to do the best you could. You raised them kids by yourself. You had no support from their father. You did the absolute best that you could. And all of your kids, you know, your kids are great. They're successful. They're healthy. They went to college. They're living fruitful lives. You prayed for them. You took them to church. You, you did the best you could. I, I think you did a good job. All the places that you failed, this is what I want you to do, Monifa. I want you to forgive yourself for not doing better when you didn't know how. Just forgive yourself, okay? And this is a no judgment zone. You know how you a therapist, Monifa, and you, you say nobody else get judged? Let's do that for you. Let's, we're not going to judge you today. So you want cinnamon raisin bagel. So what we're going to do is we're not going to get none. Because every time we get it, then we start thinking about, oh, I got to run three miles because I defeated myself. And then I go into the spiraling thing and then I want more junk food because all that junk food inside of me causes more parasites that makes me want more processed junk food. And because I don't want to do that, we're not going to start the spiral. So my emotions, guess what, guys? I put them in check. And so I'm not spiraling anymore. Do you know how much happiness and joy that is? That I put a check on my thoughts and I put a check on my behaviors and I put a check on my emotions because I'm not going to let any external components come between me and me. I love me. I'm on a self-healing journey. I love myself. I'm freaking amazing. I kiss myself. Get excited. I am amazing. So when anybody else doesn't agree that I am amazing, I get out of their presence because I'm telling you, those things they say to me, it stays with me. And I'm telling you, they say something to me and they leave. And guess what, queen? I heard it a thousand times. You excited, ain't you? You kind of over the top, ain't you? you? You need to settle down. You need, you, and they say that and they leave and I tell myself, oh, maybe I should... Oh, maybe I should. So after they leave, Queen, I heard it a thousand times. You to this. You to that. You And I'm like, oh, maybe I should. Oh, and then I said, wait one minute. God gifted this powerful woman standing right here. And if he anointed me to do this, then I'm going to do this. So anybody that's outside of me that's not in agreement with this, here is your notice today. I don't care. <laughs> I'm walking in my purpose and my destiny. So I want what I want you guys to do today is to, to declare, declare that you are in alignment with your assignment and you're walking after your purpose and your destiny. And it doesn't matter what anybody says. That's why when you get a hold of your thoughts, you're not going to be concerned about the opinions of others, okay? And when you get a hold of your behaviors, you're not going to let nobody spiral you to where you go into addictive behaviors and you traumatizing yourself. That's called self-sabotage, self-destructive behaviors. And queen, we don't do that no more. And then we're going to look at our emotions and be like, 
oh man, that boy, he triggered me. I'm staying away from him. Oh, this place, it triggers me. I'm staying away. Oh, every time I go to this job, I feel less than. Every time I go to this place, every time I'm around this person. So let me remove myself so I can remember who I am. Get excited, Cornelia, who is in alignment with her assignment. Everybody should declare that they're in alignment with their assignment. And see, for me, I had to pursue that more than anything else. And in pursuing that, guess what? I found my joy. I found my peace. I found my happiness. I used to be like, I want to be happy. <laughs> I'm miserable. <laughs> my children's father. <laughs> that was my day daily. I was miserable until I woke up and I said, wait one minute. I am connected to the most high God. I am happiness. I'm walking joy. You see me? This is, this is joy walking. You don't know what it looked like. Here, go right here. This is joy. This is joy walking right here, baby. And the moment I realized that, my life changed. So I want you guys to know this week, get excited. We are talking about mental strength. We're talking about being mentally strong. And we're talking about things mentally strong people don't do. So if you're with us for the first time, guess what? We meditate every day at the end for about two minutes. I'm showing you how to kind of get in the flow. I have to tell you, Gwen, listen. Yes, yes, yes. If you don't have five minutes, you don't have a life. Don't be delusional in this lifetime and expect your life to be beautiful and to be perfect and to be elevated and you won't take five minutes. You want your man to take time. You want your kids to take time. You want your relatives to take time. You want your co-workers to take time. But you yourself will not take time. If you don't have five minutes, you don't have a life. Those other 23 hours and 55 minutes, let them be. Do what you will. But these five minutes, you better steal away. You better tap into the power within. I'm telling you, healing one-on-one -on -one is just leading you back to you. I am a voice, but you are the voice that you have been waiting for. You have been on a journey that I can't touch. My sister Cornelia, you have been on a journey that does not reflect my life. You are a healer in your own journey, in your own lane. All of us are healers, just how? I know everybody that comes to Healing 101 is a healer. My journey takes me on my purpose and my destiny. Yours is different. It's in no comparison to no one else. So you need to go within. You need to tap within. You need to find the divine power. It's going to lead you back to yourself. And you're going to correct your thoughts. You're going to correct your behaviors. And you're definitely going to correct your emotions. And you're going to dry them tears and you're going to connect with yourself. So you better get excited. So if you would like to put your hand over your heart or close your eyes, I always say we have sight, but we don't have vision. Sometimes we need to kind of block out the outside world and just really go within to the truth. Because if you don't go within, you will go without. May God continue to shine his face upon you. May God be gracious to you and grant you peace. Say this with me. I forgive myself for believing that I should have done better when I didn't know how. And I also forgive others for the same. I forgive myself for believing that I should have done better when I didn't even know how. And everybody who did what they did, I forgive them. No judgment zone. Because the pain and the burden of unforgiveness is too heavy for me to carry. So everybody is released and everybody is free. I am open, I am ready for things to start going my way. This, this life's been a little tough. This life's been a little rough. But you know now, and I'm open, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready, because when it come this time, I'm not going to drink it away. When it come this time, I'm not going to smoke it away. When it come this time, I'm not going to spend it away. I'm, I'm going to know what to do, because you know I'm mentally strong now. I'm asking to receive a message in this physical world today that is a reflection of that. I am open and ready to receive that message. It's already done. It's already done. I already have it. It's already mine. And it is so. Guys, I love each and every one of you. I want you to have a phenomenal day on purpose. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. And please leave a comment. And I definitely... Get
can't wait to announce my winners for tomorrow. We're going to start having winners every Friday. And I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow live at 5.